My story begins in 2008 when my oldest son had a less than positive experience applying to college. I decided that that wouldn't happen to my second son, and so I, I went back to UC Berkeley to study career planning and college advising. I quickly found out, though, that our experience was not unusual. Here's a word cloud I created from adjectives students use to describe the process. Negative adjectives outnumber positive adjectives four to one. Now, knowing this, and knowing the stress our students experience, I set out to find ways to make the process more positive. Ultimately, that led me to MAP, a Master's in Applied Positive Psychology at the University of Pennsylvania. Now, that's a picture of me and John Bon Jovi at graduation. <laughs> he received an honorary doctorate of music. And to tell the truth, I'm prouder of that picture than I am the degree. <laughs> the degree is a lot of work. At Penn, together with 46 classmates from around the world, we studied under the leaders of positive psychology, folks like Angela Duckworth, the best-selling author of Grit, and Martin Seligman, who is considered to be the father of positive psychology. So, what is positive psychology? In 1998, when Seligman was president of the American Psychological Association, he suggested to his colleagues that instead of focusing on things like depression and bipolar disorder, they also spend some time looking at what makes for human flourishing. At the heart of this discipline are questions like, what makes for a life well lived? How much of our happiness is determined by location, genetics, economics? So, Seligman and his folks have had um, a lot of insights, and I'm going like, to share with you just a few. First, where you live can matter. The World Wellbeing Project uses opt-in social media, things like Twitter and Facebook, to determine happiness by county. Now, the bluer the area, the happier the folks. So as you guys noticed, here in the Gallatin Valley, we're pretty happy. We rank number 43 out of over 3,200 counties in the United States. Interestingly enough, though, our neighbors to the north, Haver, Montana, are number two nationally, which makes me wonder what's going on up there. So why does that matter? It turns out that lo uh, location matters because happiness is contagious. This is from uh, the Framingham study, yellow is happy, blue is not. There's three degrees of separation. And basically what this is saying is, if I have a friend who has a friend who has a friend who's unhappy, that's going to affect me. And unhappiness can affect our health. It turns out that our degree of positivity relative to our negativity has an impact on our health. In other words, being too negative is akin to smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. So what can you do about that? I want you to leave tonight with three things. The first is the gratitude letter. Think of someone who's impacted your life positively. Write them a letter of appreciation, and this is important, deliver it in person. Doing so can increase your happiness for six months. The next intervention is called three good things. It's simple. Think every day of three good things that happen. Now, you can just think about it, or you can keep a journal. And if you keep a journal for three weeks, it'll increase your energy, improve your sleep, and increase your happiness by 25%. Here's number three. It's character strengths, individual traits that contribute to the good life. For three years, 55 scholars studied philosophy, psychology, religion, and history spanning 2,500 years and came up with 24 traits. Next, they wanted to validate these traits. So they visited people like the Maasai in Kenya and the Inuit in Greenland, over 30 countries. And so you won't see things like ambition in this list, because while it's valued here in the United States, it's not valued throughout the world. Now, all of us have these strengths. We just exhibit them to a different extent. Here's a chart showing the 24. The top five character strengths the world over, kindness, fairness, judgment, honesty, and curiosity. Anyone care to guess the least used strength? 
Self-regulation. You got it. Now, if this intrigues you, you can take a free test and receive a ranking of your strengths at Authentic Happiness. Your top five strengths are your signature strengths, your unique way of being in the world. And using your signature strengths in a new way for one week will increase your happiness for six months. For example, I know someone with a signature strength of kindness and generosity who decided to give away earrings when someone complimented them, her on them. If you have a love of learning, perhaps you'll take up a new hobby or start a new project or, like me, go back to school. Evidence has demonstrated that self-knowledge of character strengths can reduce stress, stress, inspire optimism, improve relationships, and overall, overall well-being. I've used character strengths with my students to make the process more about possibilities and make it more positive rather than an opportunity for failure. Now, science shows we're really not very good about predicting our own strengths, but just knowing your strengths can improve your happiness. I encourage you to take the test, discover where your strengths lie, and focus on those top five or signature strengths. Finally, I'd like to leave you with a picture of some happy students. And one in the middle is my son. Um, and to remind you of three things that you can do to increase your happiness. The gratitude letter, three good things, and character strengths. Please try these because doing so might just increase your happiness. And after all, isn't that something we all want?